Well, would you look at that? I bought a frickin' van, and I absolutely love it. But no, I won't be living in it full time. Why not, Cobra Kyle? Why won't you live in it full time? Well, there's a few reasons. I don't have a job that I can do remotely, and I certainly don't make enough money off of YouTube to live on the road full time. You can help out with that though by subscribing and clicking the thumbs up button. That helps me immensely. Or you can pick yourself up a brand new Cobra Kyle logo t-shirt. It's fantastic. I'm wearing one now. It's very comfortable. I should have gone one size a little bit larger. This is a medium. It's a little snug for my growing body, but it's very comfortable nonetheless, and it looks incredible. It's got the cool snake logo up here, and then on the back, the only catchphrase I have, stay rowdy within reason. It's got this cool metal riding with lightning bolts to let everyone know that you are super cool and super fun, and you support your favorite YouTube channel. But enough with the shameless self-promotion. Let's go ahead and talk about this van. This is my 2020 Ford Transit Connect XL long wheelbase cargo van, and I picked it up brand new for around $23,500. I went with this smaller van over a traditional full-size cargo van for a few reasons. The first thing was price. It's tough to find a full-size cargo van for under $30,000, which I wasn't ready to spend because I'm not doing a full conversion or living in it. Second reason is fuel economy. This van averages about 25 miles per gallon between the city and the highway. A full-size cargo van will be lucky to average 20 miles per gallon, so less money I'm spending on fuel, the more trips I can take. And the last reason is this is going to be my daily driver. This is my only vehicle, so I didn't need a gigantic, huge cargo van just to run around and do daily tasks such as getting groceries or going to work. This thing handles just like an average car. You honestly can't even tell you're driving a van. It's actually a lot more enjoyable to drive than I expected it to be. It's slow, just not very slow. For phase one of my conversion, I wanted to keep it as simple, cheap, and modular as possible while still being comfortable for extended weekend trips to my favorite riding destinations. I'm actually heading to Colorado in less than a week for this thing's maiden voyage, and I'll be taking that time to see what works with this conversion and what needs to be changed. Phase two of my conversion would be fixing anything I find wrong with it uh, during phase one. For now, I think this thing is perfectly suitable for a long weekend, possibly even a week or two out on the road. So we're a long ways away from phase two because I don't want to dump a bunch of money into this. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a quick tour of this van. Starting outside, I will say there's nothing particularly interesting about this van. I like that it came with tinted windows. They're pretty dark, so it keeps it somewhat cool in there. If you will notice, I do have the black steel wheels. I did film some footage last week when it had the hubcaps on. No, they weren't stolen. I actually removed those so they wouldn't get stolen. Uh, and then if I ever go to sell the van, I can just pop them back on. They'll look brand new because I haven't hit any curbs with them or, or lost one or something like that. I honestly think it looks better this way. It looks like an early 90s JDM Honda Civic, so it gives it a little bit more street cred. I love the white body on the black wheels. My Mazda Miata was the same. I had a Mazda Speed 3 actually a few years ago with the same color schemes. I'm currently wearing white and black with this sick new Cobra Kyle t-shirt. So I guess it all came around full circle. Starting up front in the driver's area, I'll kind of just gloss over this really quickly because I know the exciting thing you want to see is in the back. When purchasing this vehicle, there were two main options that I wanted that didn't come standard on this. The first one being cruise control. That is a nice feature to have on long drives and also Ford Sync 3. It does have Android Auto, so I can plug my phone in, I can get my maps up on the screen. It's very handy to have my maps on the screen so I don't have to look at my phone. Uh, I can keep my eyes on the road, and that's very important when I'm going out of state and I don't know where I'm going. I love the fact that you can option that into such an affordable van. Another bonus feature this van has that I wasn't even aware of, it does have its own hotspot, so I can get Wi-Fi in the van pretty much anywhere I'm at. I got the first three months free. I think it's $20 a month after that. $20 a month, no, it's not too expensive, but I am very cheap, so I don't know if I will pay for it. I do have two USB ports down here. 
And then I have my cigarette lighter, which has two additional USB ports. I love that it has a driver's armrest. It's very comfortable. And then my passengers don't get one, so they can be very jealous of the luxury I'm caressed in at all times while driving the Ford Transit Connect. It's got two cup holders here that are nice and easy to reach. So I got my water and iced coffee on me. So I'm always dehydrated and then rehydrated. I have this big storage area right here behind the cup holders, which I keep all my pandemic supplies in. I've got masks, hand sanitizer, ready to use so I don't get sick. If you look up above you, it does have storage up here, which is where I keep my window shades. Privacy is obviously a big thing if you are sleeping or camping in here. So I did get these custom fit window shades for the side windows, and then I just got a big generic window shade for the front. I do like the custom fit ones on the side windows. They use suction cups to stick onto the window. They roll up and they fit in my overhead storage. It's nice to have all this storage. This thing is just loaded with storage and it's absolutely wonderful. All right, so enough about the driver's compartment. I think I've covered everything I need to. So let's go ahead and check out the back area, the living room, if you will, and we'll go over everything I've done back there. Welcome to my temporary home. All right, so welcome inside. As you can see, I'm sitting on my nice, comfy memory foam mattress, and that was very important to me to have something very comfortable to sleep on. I, I didn't want to lay on the floor or, or just get a thin mattress pad. So I was able to find this narrow bed. It's only 30 inches wide, while a standard twin mattress is about 36 inches wide. Obviously, if it was six inches longer, it would not fit in here with the bike. And of course, as a mountain biker, this is the most important cargo in the van. I wanted to ensure that my bike fit in the van with the bed so no one would be outside trying to steal my bike while I'm asleep. Another cool thing about this mattress is that it does fold into thirds so you can actually plop it up and use it like a couch. I also went with a taller bed frame so I could have storage underneath it. I originally was just going to throw the mattress on the ground but that eliminates a ton of storage space. The bed is held in place by a ratchet strap. There's D-rings on the floor of the van, so I just hooked one at the back, wrapped it around the bed frame, hooked one up by the front. This thing does not move, it is solid. I can corner hard, I can take it to the track. This bed is not moving. To ensure the mattress itself stays on the frame, I used some shelf liner underneath the mattress to hold it in place. Moving on to the bike and how I store it, all it is is one Velcro strap holding the rear wheel up off the ground so it can't shift. And then the front tire just rests against the back of the front seat and it's wedged in between the bed and the, and the door. It does wiggle a little bit, but it's not gonna tip over or break anything. I'm not concerned about damaging my bike. This Velcro strap was like $7. It holds 300 pounds, so I'm not concerned about it holding my 35 pound bike. I recently bought these magnets. They hold 100 pounds, or they claim to. It's just so I can store my Camelback up here. The bike holds it in place so it doesn't wiggle around too much and make a bunch of noise. Right now, I just have another magnet holding my sleeping bag here while I'm driving so it doesn't flop around or I don't lose it somewhere in here. Next, I went ahead and ordered two magnetic shelves. They also come with a couple hooks on each one. This is just to hold my phone and, and my wallet and, and my keys at night while I'm sleeping. I believe they hold about six pounds each. Have my keys there so I can easily lock the van so no external creepers can get in, but this creeper can get out. As you can see up by the driver's area, I added a shower curtain rod and a shower curtain so I can quickly uh, get some privacy if I need to, if I don't want to bother putting the sunshades in. But whenever I stop at like a gas station really quick and don't want anyone seeing my bike through the windshield, I just close that up so you can't see what's back here. For the rear windows, uh, they also made custom fit ones for those, but they're quite expensive. So I actually made my own for like 20 bucks. It was super easy. I bought a roll of Reflectix and then a couple magnets and taped the magnets to the Reflectix so it easily sticks onto the window. So I just plop them into place. When I'm not using them, I just drop them to the lower half of the door. They stick on there and they stay in place and they're always there ready to use when I need them. Coming over to the side door, it does have sliding doors on both sides, which is very cool. We're on the passenger side right now, so I'll go ahead and open this up. And this is where I keep my gear for riding. I've got my bike pump there. And then I have this box that holds all my riding gear. Got my helmet in there, shoes, knee pads, 
gloves, whatever else I need to store in there. It is also held in place with one of those Velcro straps to the D-ring down there. So it stays in place. I don't worry about it moving around or not being able to find it when I hit the track, as I mentioned earlier. And then I have plenty of space towards the rear of the van under the bed for extra cargo for my clothing, my suitcase, whatever else I bring on the trip. Another interesting feature up front is that the passenger seat folds flat down and it has a plastic back on it. Since the end of the bed is right here by the seat, if you wanted to, you could put like a drink here or something. I could put my laptop here and, and do some work while I'm laying in bed uh, on my stomach, like, like, like a girl's slumber party. For ventilation and, and airflow, I didn't want to cut a big hole in my roof and install a serious fan. Not yet at least, maybe in the future. So I bought this cool little fan on Amazon. It was $40. I know it's a little expensive. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be, but it actually puts out a lot of air. And the other nice thing is it has an LED light built into it. There is one cargo light back here, but it's not on a switch. It's only on when the door's open. So at night, I don't want to sit with the door open to have a light. So I'm just going to hang this over the bed while I'm sleeping, get some airflow, crack the front windows. So hopefully uh, battle some condensation for me sleeping, breathing heavily because I'm an ogre. I'm not going to be camping in very hot weather. I'm not going to use this until the winter in Texas, but in Colorado, the lows at night are like in the fifties. Uh, the high is like 70, so it's going to be absolutely beautiful. So there you have it. That is my new Transit Connect XL long wheelbase cargo van that I've sort of converted into a somewhat livable space for like two days. Obviously, this isn't a typical van life video where I've spent a few thousand dollars getting this thing set up to live off the grid and, and, and never return to society. I, I, I see the appeal of why people do van life. It's very exciting to me. I can't wait to go to Colorado and test this thing out. Maybe you're not ready to commit to van life like myself, or you have things standing in your way, such as a job or anything. I feel like this van goes to show that van life isn't all or nothing. You can do it part time if you want, and you can do it as cheap as you want. I probably spent maybe $300 converting this. I spent a little extra on the bed to make sure it was comfy. But for me, it's absolutely perfect for what I need it for, what I'm gonna use it for. And I'm so freaking excited to have this vehicle. I, I, I just, I just can't believe I, I finally own a van. I've always wanted to do this. So I'm, I'm so grateful I had the chance to do it now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tour of my van. I'm sorry if you're expecting a gorgeous $20,000 conversion in a tiny van that I'm going to live in full time. That was not this video. There's a billion videos like that, so feel free to check one of those out. But I'm willing to bet this is one of the cheapest and most simple builds you've ever seen and quite possibly may ever see in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay rowdy within reason. Oh, I, okay. I did hit record. I couldn't remember. That'll be a blooper, I'm sure. It's difficult to find a full... S Someone's driving by. Hold on. It's always a loud Camaro. Every time. Oh, there's a plane flying overhead. Planes are very popular in this side of town, I guess. Pretty low flying plane too. He's probably wondering what I'm doing here in this abandoned parking lot. Here we go. Oh, I didn't flip the screen around so I can't tell if I'm in the shot. I'm gonna assume I am. It does have a hook. There's plenty of mounting points in this van. Sorry, obviously I can't stand up because it's not that tall, so. Well, it broke. Well, the hook already broke off. It works, trust me. I uh, broke this off driving the other day. I guess I didn't put it back in properly.